Hi, this is George Alger, and welcome to this segment of Arventura TV. Today's topic is non-toxic weed control in Ventura County, and our guest experts are Joni Blackster, who is a health coach, and Patty Pagaling, who is the founder of Transition to Organics. Welcome, ladies. Good to see you again, George. So, Joni, let's start with you. So, let's just open this topic up. What is the issue at stake here regarding um, non-toxic weed control in Ventura County? Well, Patty and I began working together on this issue um, a number of months ago when uh, back in March of 2015 this year, uh, the World Health Organization sent a ripple out over the entire world when they reclassified glyphosate. Glyphosate is a very commonly used herbicide. It's also known as uh, Roundup or Rodeo. It's used all around the world. And the World Health Organization reclassified it from a relatively low in toxicity classification to a probable carcinogen. And this set off a firestorm. I can imagine. In fact, do you know if that's pretty uncommon that they would make such a, a radical change in a categorization of a chemical? Well, um, part of the underlying issue is that in this country anyway, the FDA has primarily relied upon the uh, clinical studies that were done by the manufacturers for this um, ingredient in, in herbicides. Um, and in this case, uh, the World Health Organization decided to conduct their own independent studies. So uh, there's this implication that the industry-funded studies cannot be trusted. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, that makes so, sense. So that is unusual. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Patty, how did you become involved with this topic? Well, uh, I began uh, being very concerned about the use of glyphosate in the county because the uh, Ventura County was spraying in the canyon where I live. Um, for when did that happen again? In 2007 they began. Okay. And I, I, along with many others, were experiencing symptoms such as dizziness, nausea, skin rashes, um, burning eyes and blurry vision, that kind of thing. And so I reached out to the community and was trying to figure out how to handle this situation to make the county stop spraying. And I contacted Dr. Bernhoft, who's an environmental health specialist here in, in our area, in Ojai. Um, and he specializes also in concerns having to do with allergy, um, which is really the, the body's um, reaction to overreaction uh, of the immune system and it brings on the um, infl inflammatory response in the body so he's very much aware of the correlation between environmental toxins and uh, acute illnesses and and um, so we got together as a community and began an organization to uh, contact the Ventura County Board of Supervisors and talk with them about this glyphosate product that they were using. And um, we didn't get very far until the World Health Organization came out with that new classification. And at that point, Supervisor Bennett said that he would stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with us to stop this, the broadcast spraying of this um, Roundup herbicide. Not, however, in the canyon, only along the Ojai Valley, the bike trail. So, it, you know, uh, glyphosate spraying continues to be conducted all over the county regularly along roadsides, uh, virtually most public spaces. So this is still occurring in the canyon you live in? Well, actually, there is an improvement in that situation as well um, because there was so much public uproar about it. Um, uh, they, they started with a huge spray over um, near the watershed directly with these big hoses, like fire hoses, <laughs> And there, there's footage of this. Um, and now what they're doing is cutting the arundo, which is the, the plant that they wanted to uh, eradicate, which is impossible to eradicate. They, it keeps growing back every year. And now they're cutting and daubing, which is better. What does daubing mean? Daubing is taking, like, painting the, 
the um, part of the plant down near the ground. Oh, okay. So they're using the herbicide to keep it from growing, or at least temporarily keep it from growing. Right. They're trying to control it, but it does grow back. Yeah. Okay. So, but so what we're focusing on uh, right now is the fact that roadside spraying occurs all over Ventura County. Now, is there an alternative solution to this particular herbicide? Uh, well, we feel there absolutely is, and in fact, there's historical precedent uh, right here in California going back two decades. Um, there is a study, and let me just get you the exact name of it. It's called The Poisoning of Public Thoroughfares, if anybody wants to look it up. It was written by the Executive Director of California for Alternatives to Toxics, and it was published in 1999. And this study uh, laid out a very clear strategy for how to employ totally 100% non-toxic strategies. Um, and the report identified exactly how to do so by coming within budget as defined by the state of California. And uh, we have at least four counties. Uh, that would be Alpine, Humboldt, Mendocino, and Trinity, all of which have this strategy very successfully in place. Okay. So what kind of challenge are you bumping into in trying to move Ventura County in that direction? Well, Patty, do you want to take that? Well, I think because they're entrenched in a certain way of doing things and because there's a, a, a budget that they've already allotted to, uh, you know, buying a certain amount of the product and all that. And it's just a matter of kind of switching paradigms. We should be looking at the health of the community, of the people, as more important than whether they want to buy a certain amount of uh, Roundup every year. So it, it's, it's totally doable. We know that from all the other examples that um, other counties and cities have, have shown. And there's been another new vastly important um, uh, change, which is that shortly after the World Health Organization's announcement, uh, there was a lawsuit filed right next door in LA County. Uh, the, uh, it is a class action suit that uh, charges false advertising you know, for the label uh, that's uh, used for glyphosate. So if you look at the label, it says that it's relatively non-toxic. And with all of the new uh, clinical studies that are coming out, and I tell you the World Health classification, reclassification is just one in a whole series uh, of clinical studies that associate the use of glyphosate with a whole range of diseases. Um, we're talking about how years ago, Monsanto patented it as a mineral chelator and antibiotic. Mineral chelator means when you eat food, and we're talking about major sources of food, particularly in anything processed. So uh, GMO foods are all drenched in glyphosate, and that would be corn, soy, um, sugar beets, sugar beets. Um, what else? I know I'm missing some. Let's, uh, so these foods are very commonly in any kind of junk food, processed food, and they're loaded with glyphosate. So we're eating the glyphosate that way. Um, and uh, so Monsanto patented it years ago as a mineral chelator, meaning anytime you eat food that has the glyphosate on it, uh, the glyphosate is combining biochemically in your body with the minerals, so you don't get the benefit of those minerals. You can't absorb them. Furthermore, it's a patented antibiotic, and uh, just in, I believe it was April of 2015, another study came out linking the use of glyphosate with creating the killer superbugs, and this is a, a byproduct of this antibiotic effect that glyphosate has in the human body. Um, it also damages the immune system because in that antibiotic capacity, it kills all the good buggies that we need in our intestines. 80 to 85 percent of our immune system is embedded in our intestinal lining. That immune system depends directly on the healthy probiotic uh, microflora, which are killed by glyphosate. This directly interferes with the immune system, hence the announcement by the World Health Organization finding that glyphosate is linked to cancer. 
Uh, it's also, glyphosate is uh, linked to a very deadly form of kidney disease. It's directly, the sales of glyphosate are directly associated with the rise in autism, almost precisely. It's quite uh, striking when you see the graph. Uh, all kinds of intestinal problems, hormonal problems, infertility, miscarriage. There's even uh, some talk that the rise in depression is linked to glyphosate. Uh, so many of the farmers in India have been killing themselves. Suicides uh, due to the what has been perceived as the political situation of the um, GMO foods being owned in many ways by the the uh, industry when this new suggestion is that perhaps the constant exposure to the glyphosate that they must drench those foods with is affecting their, their emotional system because our mood is directly related to the condition of our microbiome. There are so many problems. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of information. Now, because it has been reclassified as a carcio carcinogenic, wouldn't that automatically fall under some other federal or state legislation which excludes that from being used in a public capacity, or is that not the case? No. Well, I think there's a Prop 65 that um, excludes, in certain cases, certain carcinogenic materials to be used. And that's but a California prop, not mm -hmm. a federal. Um, but this is a probable carcinogen, so I'm not sure what that classification really falls under. Okay. To get federal bans is a huge deal. And, you know, we may potentially be looking at that eventually, because as I said, the World Health Organization set off a firestorm. But not surprisingly, we are not hearing very much about political ramifications in this country because this is the home to the industry. And there are countries that have been banning it just uh, recently. Mm -hmm. yep. It's been coming out. There's at least a half a dozen that already have bans or partial bans in place, and at least a half a dozen more, most of those in Europe, that have very active campaigns. Now, are there consumer products that people might have at home that include this chemical so that you know, people might want to not have that in their home? Absolutely. Could you name some of them? Well, it's the Roundup, Rodeo, uh, Aquamaster. They're, they, they have a whole array of names. And so these are... These are things These that are are herbicides. Just go and buy at a store. So they're yes. all for weed control, and you want to look on the label, and if you see the word glyphosate, then you know. Okay. So for someone who wants to have non-toxic herbicides or use non-toxic herbicides, what would be some suggestions for someone in this area? Well, there's an agricultural-grade vinegar product that's used. Um, what we really are pushing for is the use of mulch, which makes the, the, necess the necessity of any kind of herbicide unnecessary when it is, um, you know, the right application for the, a specific situation. Okay. Mulch is a fantastic solution in yeah. this area because it also helps the soil to retain water. Okay. Well, we're out of time, but I'd like to see if we can sneak in the uh, website that people could go for more information mm -hmm. and a very brief summating message. Well, the website is www.transition-2-organics.org and our, our, we are requesting, we are asking, I don't know if we want to demand, we are asking that there is 100% non-toxic weed control in Ventura County um, implemented by Ventura County Public Works. So we are asking residents of Ventura County who would like to see this put into place uh, that they contact uh, their supervisors. Uh, we've been in contact with Supervisor Steve Bennett and uh, you know feel free to uh, email him and let him know how you feel about the subject. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is George Alger signing off for this segment of Arventura TV. Until we meet again.